Okay, ito, ito, ito. Pag-usapan naman natin ang opposition, baka sasabihin na naman, ito na naman si Ronald at Richard, nag apply na naman sa Malacan niya. <laughs> Let's just be clear. It just happens a certain person is in power by some, I don't know, weird twist of history. But but now, okay, pag-usapan natin ang opposition because, you know, Ronald, especially in my circles, academic circles, you always hear Philippines, weak state, strong society. You know, there's that's always what they say about Philippines, about India, among others. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ronald. One of the things we noticed during uh, Duterte time is how we both have a weak state and sometimes even the strength of our civil society perhaps was exaggerated. I mean, I don't know, you correct me, Ronald, but there were so many people who were supposedly progressive and then nung si Digong naging presidente, biglang, even after the purge of the some people, ah, andun pa rin sila, pro Digong pa rin, andun pa. You know, and daming, I'll, be, I'll put it honestly, and daming civil society people na lumabas na operator lang pala sila in the end, right? Now, mm-hmm. you, you, you know what I'm saying? The way they would, I mean, like how can you claim you're an advocate for these rights and that and then you completely turn a blind eye if not apologize for mass atrocities, crimes against humanity, right? And dami, dami natin kilalang ganun, hindi lang sa Manila, but sa mga probinsya, wag na natin pangalanan, itag na lang natin mamaya sa Facebook. No, no, but um, so actually some part of me was wondering, are we, do we really have a strong civil society? Because, you know, it is okay to bring thousands of people when someone like BBM or Aquino who are not dictatorial, right? Uh, madali lang naman maglo. But the, the real test of a strong civil society is when you have a very popular authoritarian populist leader, demagogue, can you bring them out? In fairness, India has proven that they have a strong civil society. They have a weak political opposition. But remember yung ginawa nila a few years ago, yung mga farmers, they marched all the way to New Delhi. They occupied the outskirts of New Delhi, hundreds of thousands of them. And eventually they forced Modi to revisit some of his major land acquisition uh, policies, agricultural policies. So that's Modi na, a very, very astute, a very, very powerful, organized populist. And I was always, always wondering, but walang ganyan sa Pilipinas? Turkey, di ba? Nung elections sila. Erdogan almost lost. The opposition came together. They had a united um, slate. They, uh, alam ko, hindi na ako maimbita ulit. Um, <laughs> but you, know, you, you see what I'm saying, right? I, I really began to doubt itong weak state, strong uh, society. I think we have a weak state, weak civil society sometimes, and very strong men once in a while, right? Who who just damage the system. So, ang, ang ta- tanong ko dito is, for instance, in Colombia, we saw the victims of uh, Pablo Escobar. Right, they came out. They organized. Well, some of them got also deadly. Right, they 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 visited revenge on Pablo Escobar. Nagkaroon ng civil war sa Medellin. I'm not asking for that, but what I'm what I'm curious about is, bakit hindi nagkaroon ng ganyan mobilization? I mean, all due I mean all due credit to Riza Ontiveros for being there for Kian de los Santos family for her coming out for victims of or alleged victims of etong si self proclaimed people, but etong ay so aside from Riza, where is the where's where's the warm bodies on the ground? Civil society. Why are we not hearing the stories of the victims, the parents of the victims, the children of the victims? There are hundreds of thousands of them potentially, right? Kung 30,000 ang ano, and each of them have four family members at least. You were talking about huge number, and for some reason, Ronald, it looks like umasa parin tayo ano gagawin ni BBM, ano gagawin ni BBM? Why? What or? Kairisa lang. I mean, where are the rest? Where is the civil society? Shouldn't they come out now? Shouldn't they bring out, essentially, make it, force it upon BBM to make the right decision on the ICC issue? Well, we have a very strong, very dynamic civil society in the 80s and in the 90s. Diba? Nagkaroon tayo, no? Uh, ito, yung mga, ito yung golden age of coalitions. Thousands of uh, NGOs, no? Uh, ang daming advocacies, etc. Ang problema ay nanatili siya in the Gramsham, Gramsham uh, uh, ethos. Nanatili siyang war opposition. Diba? Hindi, siya, hindi siya na-consolidate at nag-complement into a, war, into, a, into a war opposition inside the constructs of government. No? Dapat nag-complement siya. Eh. War of motion, war opposition. No? Yun yung naging problema. When uh, nag-desisyon itong dynamic civil society na ito na pumasok sa war of position inside the state, mga ko na yan eh, turn of the century na yan. Diba? Kahit yung, kahit yung akbayan eh, na, na pumasok yan, 98, 99, dyan lang sila pumasok. No? So yung, uh, yung uh, wellspring ng uh, dynamism, yung wellspring 
ng uh, organization nung 80s at saka 90s no ay medyo pa nag ebb na no before the new century uh, entered nung nagpa siya yung civil society to enter uh, the state no yun yung uh, yun yung isa no ikalawa ay nakita natin yung uh, yung uh, perfect storm ng technology ng populism no ng uh, disruption no nakita natin yan nitong uh, panahon ni Digong no na panahon natin nakita natin yan may kaunting lumabas nung panahon ni Erap no panahon ni Erap lumabas yan uli nung panahon ni Pinoy to some extent pero nakita natin yung uh, yung pagragasan yan nung panahon nung 2016 ni Digong at hindi ko masisi yung opposition tsaka civil society because at that time, civil society has been dramatically weakened. Halos wala ng mga NGOs. Halos wala ng mga coalitions. No? At uh, uh, yung opposition naman, uh, as epitomized by the Liberal Party, uh, they didn't know what hit them. No? Hindi, na, hindi nila na, na, na deconstruct, hindi nila na analyze, hindi nila na profile yung itong mga populist leader Uh, na na sumusulpot no not only around the world but lalo na sa ating bansa i, I disagree ko... Ronald di ba ang, oh. ang explanation sa lahat is disinformation but oh. kay nipa ng jowa mo disinformation bakit yeah. hindi pinoto ng election disinformation <laughs> bakit yeah. nasara ng ano disin di ba i mean come on that's that's what pero, they do. pero pero no 20 pero no 2016 they were the ruling party No, they were the ruling party then. So hindi sila ganoon kakwan. At kung at kung tutusin, diyan pala nagsisimula yung Cambridge Analytica, di ba? Iyon yung panahon ng Cambridge Analytica eh, uh, 2016. So hindi pa siya ganoon ka kasabog eh. Hindi pa siya sumasabog eh. Nagsisimula pa lang siya, no? Ah, uh, medyo medyo na huli. Medyo na huli, no? Ah, uh, kaya tapos s'yempre overconfident yung Liberal Party dahil sila yung ruling party. Hindi nila inasahan na tatamaan sila nitong wave ng populism na ito. Itong wave ng uh, technology na ito. At uh, yung uh, hanggang hanggang uh, hanggang uh, eve ng campaign period, no official campaign period, ang tingin ng Liberal Party kay Digong, an asset na pwede nilang gamitin, no, para humina si Binay, no? At to some extent, extent si Grace po. Ganun yung appreciation nila kay Digong. Hindi nila nakita si Digong as the primary threat. No? Hindi nila nakita na itong, itong bastion of populism at that point no? ay isang threat. No? Ang tingin nila kay Digong, well, nandyan siya, popular siya, pero not enough to win. At, yeah, makakatulong, siya, figure, at right? makakatulong siya para ma-weaken yung primary threat, which is Binay. At ikalawa, si Grace po. So, yun yung yun yung nangyari, no? Yun ang nangyari. At nung nangyari yung 2019, nasa height na si Digong ng kanyang popularity. 91, 92% approval rating. That was 2019, 2020. Kaya hindi lang kakagulat na na zero yung uh, yung opposition. At hindi lang yun. Hindi na kapag adjust yung yung opposition into a new political narrative. Consistent consistent with the time of populism of disinformation no nanatili silang biktima eh no tama ka pwede hindi nila napansin yan noong 2016 dahil sila nga yung ruling party pero 2019 dapat nakapag-adjust ka na dapat nakita mo na what hit you eh di ba pero hindi pa rin kung nakita mo yung campaign ng Ocho Derecho noong 2019 walang ganoon eh walang ganoon no at go at fast forward sa 2022 no Medyo may kaunting adjustment na. Nakikita mo sa laki ng mga rally, nakikita mo sa 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 kulay ng kampanya, no? Pero medyo cluttered pa rin yung messaging, no? Kumpara sa focus messaging ni BBM at saka ni Duterte, no? Pero may kaunting adjustment, but not enough. Not enough. Tapos ngayon, nitong past two years ni BBM, parang natahimik na naman at least yung traditional opposition na iwan si Risa na nagingay but all the others no ay hindi lamang lumiit no at tumahimik tumahimik no halimbawa liberal party no liberal party walang nanalo sa kanila last oh, na hindi ka naman maimbita tas ako na naman oh, si Cristine walang, oh, walang nanalo sa kanila last election <laughs> dapat nakapag-assess sila bakit walang nanalo no ibang usapin yung sa presidente pero walang nanalo na na senador tapos kakaunting congressman lang ang nanalo dapat dapat na, na analyze na nila ng gusto yan 
At ngayon, hindi lang yun. Doon sa ilan na nanalo na Liberal Party, nahati pa sa tatlo. May sumama sa minority, dalawa. May sumama sa administration, four or five. At may yung presidente ng Liberal Party na iwan as independent minority. Hindi ko maintindihan. No? Maliit na partido, na wipe out ka na halos, yung natira, nahati pa sa tatlo. No? At halimbawa, yung sumama sa administration, hindi lang sumama sa administration. No? Co-author ng Maharlika. Defender ng Chacha. No? Defender ng Chacha. Eloquent Sito. apologies. No? O, tapos, uh, two days ago, yung isang member ng minority na Liberal Party nag-abstain doon sa contempt or warrant of arrest ni Kibuloy. No? So, kakaunti na lang yan. Ha? Tapos, yung, uh, hindi pa nila nakita na kinakailangan baguhin yung narrative to be more disruptive. Di ba? Eh ngayon, hindi mo naman masasabing disruptive si Kiko Pangilinan. Di ba? Paano ko magmamarka? Di ba? Paano ko magmamarka? Hindi lamang dahil tumahimik ka na matagal, no? Nung nagsimula kang magina- magingay, medyo kapos, medyo kulang. At filing of candidacy na sa October. Election na next year. So, mahihirapan may- uphill ka. Di ba? Lalo na wala ka sa surveys. No? Wala ka sa surveys. So, hindi ako magugulat. kung uh, makaka mali-repeat yung 2019 unless dramatically mag-scale up sila. Ang gandang opportunity Ronald, para Ronald, mag-scale medyo... up eh dahil dahil una nahati yung nahati yung unit team. Gandang opportunity, di ba? Na na pumasok ka diyan, no? Uh, pero bakit bakit kulang pa rin? Bakit kapos pa rin? Sir, ang puso puso mag mag what what cold water ka. Hindi <laughs> dahil <laughs> Dahil concern ako, dahil alam mo well, naman. I, I know, Ron. I will kahit pa paano, kahit hindi tayo iniimbita, yung ating sentiments nandun naman eh, di ba? Yeah, naman... Ronald, why are we doing this? Let's be honest. Uh, I mean, yeah. I don't think we would have done this if we think things are doing okay outside. Right? I'm yeah, sure there yeah. are... we would do more foreign policy, right? But the reason hmm. that we alam kami is because kitang-kita namin like, ano ba yan? Like, ano ba yan? <laughs> <laughs> ano to? Ano oh. to? Parang ganun. Limawa, limawa, ikaw, big R, No? Uh, sabi mo nga, nakaka-1 million ka sa Facebook, no? And you're not even a politician. Pero ibig sabihin, nagagamit mo yung technology, nagagamit mo yung... May mga engagement lang yan, kala na pera to. Oh, <laughs> oh, di ba? Ibig sabihin, nagagamit mo yan para mag, magsimulang mag-disrupt to get atten- the attention of people. Bakit hindi nila magawa yon? Bakit hindi nila ginagawa? Hindi naman hindi naman tayo ganun katalino eh. No, marami mas Ronald, mas di, ano eh, daw, no? cloud oh. chaser kasi tayo, cloud oh. chaser. Oh. Oh. Hindi, hindi daw sila cloud chaser, they're humble people. Hey, tsaka tayo, Part self-appointed political analyst, no? Kaya <laughs> 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 yeah, lang, na, parang ah, kung meron lang, kung meron pwedeng makita sa ganitong ating example, it can be done. No, it can, it be, can done. be done talaga. Oh. I think Christian is good. Why, why are not they doing? Why, yeah. why are they na why are they why, why are they not doing it? Yun yung aking kwale. October na, filing na lang kandida si election na lang next year. Bakit wala pa ako nakikita ang scaling up? But hindi yung lessons ng technology, yung lessons ng disruption, no? Yung lessons ng uh, mga political narrative, no? Bakit right. bakit wala pa? Ano yan gagawin mo sa campaign field period next year? Do mo sisimulan? Yun yung doon ako nagtataka, no? Ang dami na nangyari para kumuha ka ng lessons. Ang dami na nangyari para maging basis mo to create your own narrative na sangayon sa challenges ng panahon. At ang dami lumabas. Million, million March nung election 2022. I mean, it's not like, you know, like, nag- 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 dream, daydream kami dito. Exactly. We yeah. saw embers. I mean, sorry, yeah. not even embers. We saw green shoots, di ba? Yeah. Of, of of something special, something big, something. I think the Abanse 1.2 million sa Makati. I was there, no? 15 hours and yung mga tao hindi yung maales, hindi yung maales, no? And most of them are young people, no? I mean, from one of my first lives, as in blog lives, was from mm. soft rallies and sa daming tao gumagamit ng internet kasi middle class lahat to, di ba? Ang hirap kumawa ng internet, gana, dagsa ng tao. I mean, these are things I saw in Hong Kong nung during Hong Kong protests. You know, mm. huge crowds and I talang, I was, uh, and to see all of these A-list celebrities coming out, uh, say General Luna, among others. I mean, you saw it. Andun na yung ano eh. Andun na yung... Uh, blueprint essentially was shouting in your uh, in your face so uh, 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 ayo nilang 
kung ayaw nila makinig sa atin, tignan nila si Tulpo. Three Tulpo Brothers. <laughs> no? Wala, lalo ma-depress tayo dyan. <laughs> radio, yeah. radio program. Ba't hindi sila matutulon? No? Ba't hindi nila pag-aralan yun? No? Three Tulpo Brothers. Number one sa party list. Number one sa Senate. Magna-number one uli sa Senate. Nilalampasan si Sarah sa service. Hindi pa nag-a-announce yan. So, ano... Uh, Anong anong magic meron yan? No? Anong mga magic uh, potions <laughs> yung 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 kinakailangan pala? Ano, look like like, like uh, Rafi is doing all, 'di ba? He's still in media, he's still senate, he's like he's doing all of this sabay-sabay, 'di ba? It looks like he has oh. a lot of energy for everything, 'di ba? And he's speaking a lot of big fights at the same time strategic also with picking his uh, choosing his battles. So, apparently you can do it all naman, 'di ba? I mean, we're Obviously, we have our disagreements with the method and, and sometimes the messaging. But in terms of yung, I mean, like multi-front offensive, I think yeah. it's a lot of... Diba ito walk out siya. Diba nag walk out siya doon sa hearing with... Okay, Bato. Bato. Oh, hindi ko na po siya. Ito galit si Bato. Pero, sino ang nakinabang doon? Si Tulpo. Exactly. Diba? He looks strong. Sinunatan niya, minuro niya yung mga Isaac. police. Diba? Nagsisinamali, et cetera, et cetera. Nasa lang simpat siya noon? Nakit Tulpo, hindi kay Bato. Diba? Oh, nung na nung kinonfront niya si Pia Cayetano, tapos nilabas niya yung napakaraming papeles about sa DepEd, no? Et cetera, et cetera. Sino na kinabang doon? Si Pia, who is running for re-election, o si Tulpo? That's but the bato is very good, ah. That's performative politics, ah. That's performative politics. Performative, but, but my basis, I mean, in a way, hindi naman, kasi diba, this is the difference. Yung kapila, yung mga iba dyan, alam mo na sino, magdadrama-drama sila kung nahuli sila, may ginawa sila mali. Eto si Tulpo, may drama, pero the mess, the underlying message is, kaya ako nag-walk out kasi you're not holding people accountable. Which is a good message, right? Oh. Kaya ako nag-walk out or kaya ako nag-ganyan kasi hindi kayo yeah. nag-respond dun sa rec. So you can uh, you can uh, criticize the Pero exact... Pero may PCSO. Simple oh, right. PCSO. No? Simple PCSO. Ito na lang nga ang, ang pag-asa ng mga may hirap. From rags to riches. No? Lolokohin nyo pa? Dadayain nyo pa? O yun. Diba? Imagine mo yung mark kanon sa mga may corona lalo diba? tayong mababash hindi lang kayo <laughs> nag-apply sa Malacanang sabi ko lang ang doble kara ba kayo sa office sabi niya nag-advise sabi ko lang yung mga katulad mo na pinklawan dapat ma- ma- matuto dyan yun lang naman sinasabi ko eh <laughs> ayan no? tayo eh ayan tayo coming from someone who was in the Aquino administration I'll take it with the great <laughs> result <laughs> then, sir Ronald, uh, last point on this episode. I think this episode, again, naging emotional tayo dalawa as usual. Hindi, <laughs> kasi I mean, I hope people understand. I mean, ay- ayaw naman namin magpa-cute. I mean, I prefer a world na kahit boring I mean, yung... Anything but cute. Si Richard pa, pwede. Ayan, 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 ayan. Anything but cute. No? <laughs> <laughs> so, ito, ito, ito. Sir Ronald, do you think... I mean, you're right. 70s, 80s, golden era of civil society, civil society leadership. Do you think there was a gap in terms of training the next generation of leaders? Ah, uh, you my older millennials like me or you know like bring it down. Do you think may may konting gap doon to put it nicely? I mean again, we're again all due respect to to folks and friends and colleagues fighting the good fight. But but at the same time, do you think there's a mismatch between itong rise of all of these opportunistic clowns and demagogues and what they bring to the table in terms of their political momentum and appeal and and yung counter forces. forces hindi, lang, right. hindi, lang, hindi lang gap. Suddenly, we hit the wall. Kami, lahat kami, nung panahon namin, lahat ng mga youth and students, no, ay kailangan dumaan sa organizing. Lahat kami has to be tested in fire. Sa picket line, sa demolition, no, sa countryside, etc. No? Whatever political, ideological formation you came from, kailangan dumaan ka dyan, no At kaya napaka-crucial sa mga coalition, sa civil society, na mga youth na nagsimula as leaders, as organizers, etc. No? Suddenly, suddenly, nagulat ka na lang, you woke up in the morning, wala na, wala na mga strikes. Suddenly, you woke up, wala na mga demolition. No? Suddenly, you woke up, no? na y- yung, yung peasantry, nasisimula na mag-ubos, naging OFW na. Yung kanilang uh, generation ng, ng farmers. No? Suddenly, Merong nang smartphone. Everybody is communicating. Everybody is uh, educating. Everybody is nandun na sa, sa internet. No? Parang suddenly you hit the wall eh. Yung mga teachings mo, yung mga study circles, no? yung mga political education, suddenly hindi na siya umuubra. Dahil ang absorptive capacity ng mga tao, especially the youth, ay 30 seconds na lang or one minute. Suddenly, no? 
hindi kami na realize namin no we are we are old artifacts no yun yung nangyayari ngayon at marami hindi nakapag-adjust marami nag hindi hindi nakapag-adjust dahil napakabilis eh napakabilis ng speed eh wala man lang transition period eh di ba na, na mag-adjust ka siguro isa yun sa naging problema isa yun sa naging problema Rona, I'll, I'll say one more thing so before yeah. we go to the next episode kasi we need to also talk about West Philippines and international affairs and all um hmm. So, if you look at it, I mean, my first book was on the Arab uprisings, and yesterday I was I was uh, reading something about comparison of different uh, revolts throughout the 21st century, and and nakitiko apparently there's one book now which kind of confirms what I've been saying. This century has not produced a single successful revolution, right? Mm-hmm. And damning revolts occupy Wall Street, Arab revolts. I mean, I can go on and on. Not a single one has succeeded, and my sense is one big problem is this ideology of autonomy uh, you know autonomism horizontalism you know you cannot tweet the revolution in fact literally in my first book on the arab spring there's a, there's a chapter when i called twitter devolution right that if you think through hashtag you can hashtag your revolution there will always be a kgb on the other side who can better do it than you there will always be a troll farm who can do it better than you. there'll be always a site who will spy on you use your own tweets to track you down and expose you. So I just feel there has this this there's this false false ideology that makes people think through just tweeting and and I'm saying this with 100% self-consciousness that mm-hmm. that a lot of my political activism, reluctant political activism is through Twitter and all of that. But I'm saying it at least with self-awareness that this is not enough. If anything, it could be counterproductive kung hanggang diyan lang because at the end of the day There'll be no revolution or change if the people in the barracks, right, those who hold power, do not split, do not change. So don't you think there's also this folly of over-fascination with all of this, you know, horizontalism, networkism, it doesn't work. There's no evidence it has created a single successful revolution in the third decade of the 20th century. Yeah. Well, uh, kailangan natin mas mahabang uh, diskusyon. Okay, third decade na pala tayo, yeah. fourth decade. Yeah, yeah. Oh, kailangan natin mas mahabang diskusyon. Perhaps a uh, hundred sessions para pag-usapan ito. <laughs> no. Pero, yeah, but exactly, but can you, can you quickly, give a teaser so that people yeah. look forward? Yeah, yeah. Oh, because, quickly, that's what I want to do. If once yeah. we sit down, hopefully, I don't know, somewhere tagay tayo, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I want us with a nice background talk about something very yeah. green, right? Organization. Yeah, yeah. That's where, yeah, yeah. I, no, sorry, Ron, I'm cutting you yeah, because yeah. that's where I really like our our partnership because i i respect that part of you i i don't agree with some of your ideas and isa alanganin ako sa iyo pero ronald i respect you when it comes to yung yung talagang gangster og background eh. and it's that og background that people yeah, forget yeah. eh yeah well una naging debate namin to ni maria resa in one of the rappler uh, seminars no uh dahil we're we're so nice na, na dahil ayaw nating i-weaponize ang technology So ang nagwe-weaponize ng technology are the forces of reaction. 'Di ba? Yun ang nagwe-weaponize, no? This authoritarian populists, etc. Sila yung nagwe-weaponize nito to their advantage, no? Uh, the Trump of this world, no, the Bolsonaros of this world, etc., no. Ah, uh, ikalawa ay uh, uh, parang naging either or eh. Yung dati nating mga contradictions na ibinabandera which is basically centered on class no ay parang naging uh, uh, anatema dun sa mga issues of identity dun sa mga social issues like environment parang nahiwalay na fragment yung ating ideological uh, moorings na fragment yung ating narrative which shouldn't be which shouldn't be magkakaugnay yan eh class ecology identity ano nangyari parang yung iba naging woke yung iba naging uh, ultra leftist yung iba ay naging uh, pie in the sky environmentalist which should not have happened it weakened all of them no it weakened identity it weakened class it weakened et- etno- uh, ecology ethnicity etc kanya ni eh, integrated din eh. ang problema walang mga ideologues no na dinevelop sila as a co- coherent whole no yun yung naging problema. Kung meron man, ay hindi masyadong na-popularize. So, yun lang yung quick answer ko na part nitong weakness na ito. Na pwede natin talakay. Exactly. As I said, this is just a teaser. No, I just felt we have to, I have to spell it out, di ba? Again, kasi, 
I think sometimes na misunderstood na naman tayo or some people deliberately try to dismiss us to say, eh, na naman si Ronald Richard, nagpapakit na naman sila, yung mga analyst na yun, wala naman. No, I want to make these people realize, I don't know anong ginagawa nyo, but actually last time I checked, Oh. I'm I'm studying all cases all around the world as much as I can, right? And 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 I really realize my gaps talaga dito sa Pilipinas. And I rather ask an OG like you than some I don't know, cute person who did I don't know some sociology graduate course on blah 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 horizontalism. It doesn't work. Period, right? It just uh, it's not enough to really uh turn things over. If you don't believe me, go and ask people who are fighting the big fight in Russia, in the Middle East, in China. They'll tell you tell you the reality. Thank you so much, Ronald. Kailangan natin ano, puso, puso. Protect natin ang puso. Hindi ito yung puso ng, ano, ng gita sa ibang puso ito. Maraming salamat, Sir Ronald Diamat. Susunod natin episode, pag-usapan naman natin ang foreign policy kasi magtitrap na naman ulit ang ating pinamahal na Pangulo. Papunta naman sa Washington, D.C. Mag-White House na naman siya. Mukhang yearly, maging annual event na ito ni BBM. Sige, salamat, Sir Ronald. Imagine in less than a month, four trips. <laughs> Alam mo, Ronald. Five, ano five, five trips. <laughs> Gulliver's. Ano, <laughs> hindi na siya Magellan <laughs> Gulliver's. <laughs> Mapabash na naman ako ng mga taga Malacanang. Ito na naman si Adar. <laughs> Sabi, bakit si Adar yung travel ng travel? Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay? Iba yung mga ginagawa namin. Okay? Salamat, <laughs> Sir Ronald. God bless. <laughs>